Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Maple Ridge, Kamloops, Nanaimo, and now Penticton. All of these cities have had their concerns about how to provide appropriate supports for those dealing with mental health and addictions ignored and in fact steamrolled by this government. Yesterday, when the Premier was claimed he was, in quotes, working with the city of Penticton, his Attorney General was actually bullying elected officials in the city of Penticton. He has repeatedly insulted local officials and ignored their very legitimate concerns about the lack of adequate provincial mental health support. At a time when Penticton is asking for more mental health support, the government is cutting funding to the Pathways Program, to the Addiction Treatment Centre, so desperately needed. So to the Premier, does he believe that cutting services, ignoring the needs of people in Penticton and elsewhere, threatening and bullying a community is acceptable? Attorney General. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chair, and thank you to the member for the important question. You know, it's a, it's a difficult situation as uh, Minister for Housing when a municipality makes the decision to close an emergency shelter with 42 people in it and they have nowhere to go. What do you do? There are two options. One is you ignore the issue. You let the city empty out the shelter into a local park and you hope that an encampment doesn't result from it. The alternative is to, as the member says, and I freely acknowledge this, to use what are quite draconian provincial powers to override that local decision and can continue to operate the shelter. There are no good options here. I don't pretend that this was a good option or a solution to homelessness. It is a necessary decision. It is a hard decision. But to me, taking into account the dignity and frankly the lives of 42 British Columbians, 42 Penticton residents, 80% of which have lived in Penticton for five or more years. But what to do in that situation? It turned out to be a difficult decision, but at the end of the day, the only decision to continue to operate the shelter, to move ahead as quickly as we can, to put supportive housing in place so that we can close the shelter and we can all move forward. And I, I say to the member and I say to the mayor and council in Penticton, that's the only non-negotiable. The only non-negotiable is we will not go backwards and move people out of shelter back into parks. And anything else is on the table, let's talk about it, let's, let's work together. Leader of Official Opposition on Supplemental. Well, thank you very much, and that's an amazing change of tone by this Attorney General when he's called on to answer a question in the Legislature. He started this discussion in a dismissive, combative, bullying way, and to suggest and to suggest members and to suggest that the locally effect, elected officials in Penticton don't care about the residents in their community would be absolutely inaccurate and the minister should withdraw that remark he has been the problem in this discussion from the beginning let's be clear Penticton was shocked when this minister, instead of sitting down and having thoughtful and reasonable discussions about an issue that matters to the local Penticton Council and all British Columbians, he started to bully and threaten that if they didn't listen, it was his way or the highway. So let's be clear. Penticton needs, and so do other communities across British Columbia, full wraparound services to support people with mental health and addictions challenges. That's what the Penticton Council was asking this minister for. Instead, what did they get? Bullying and threats. 
So how can the Premier, once again to the Premier, how can he justify bullying municipalities at the very same time that he and his government are failing to provide adequate, resort, uh, res, uh, adequate resources for people who need help and closing an addictions treatment centre? Attorney General. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. The member is simply wrong. Um, the reason she doesn't provide any quotes of my insults and bullying is because they don't exist. Yeah, yeah. They do not exist. And, and she suggests... Members, members, you ask the, members have asked the question and the time to get the answer. The member suggests, because I said that if Penticton emptied the, the shelter out into the park, an encampment would likely result and that our use of provincial powers could result in a court challenge that would result in exactly that outcome, that we would provide tents and manage as best as possible. Well, we, we have a thousand tents in a stockpile, that's right. That we would provide tents. Members. That we would provide tents to people as a basic shelter from the elements. The member says that's bullying. Well, that's just a fact. And I had two meetings with Penticton extended meetings on Zoom, more meetings than any other city that doesn't have an active encampment before they made this decision, in an effort to avoid this outcome. And so, you know, I, in one of those meetings I said to Penticton Council, I said, I suspect we agree on far more than we disagree on, and let's keep working until we find something we disagree on. Well, unfortunately, we found something we disagreed on, and that was whether or not we should go backwards and dump 42 people out into a park. And I will not withdraw that. That is a disgraceful decision. I, I am very sympathetic to municipal leaders in the time of COVID facing addiction and mental health issues that are more visible than they, uh, they've ever been. And our government is very sympathetic. $100 million in a Stronger Communities Fund to grapple with these issues. Billions in housing. We cannot go backwards. That's the only non-negotiable. And I am keen to work with Penticton Council. My phone is on, my door is open. I have said that so many times. I disagree profoundly with their decision. I look forward to working with them.